نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم الفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا كنت من الصلاة فاغسلوا وجوهكم الآية وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقبل صلاة بغير تهور ولا صدقة من غلول صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم My dear respected brothers and sisters continuing inshallah on the discussion on the topic of wudu in our last day session we spoke about the compulsory elements of wudu we showed different ikhtilafat and different opinions with regards to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we should watch up to a certain limb what exactly does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean is it inclusive of the elbows is it not, not inclusive of the elbows is it inclusive of the, the ankles or is it not, not inclusive of the ankles we mentioned that in our last day sh session and the last thing that we spoke about is that when we are making wudu, the water must touch our skin. And if there is anything that would prevent the water from touching the skin, then it would be essential, it is necessary that we remove such materials, example paint or glue. Then it is mentioned that the eyebrows, if they grow densely, it will not be compulsory to wash that area of the face which is beneath the dense eyebrows, says Mufti Shabil alayhi rahma in his notes. If the eyebrow, we have to wash the face, and last day we mentioned about the, the thick beard and the thin beard. And the thick beard, we mentioned that it is only necessary to wash the area that is on top of the face, and underneath the beard, if it is thick, and what is thick, that you cannot see, the roots of the beard. And in such a case, you will not have to allow water to penetrate into that beard. On the contrary, the thin beard, whereby you can see the roots of the beard, it, must, it is essential that water reaches the roots of there. So likewise, Mufti Shabil alayhi rahma, in his notes here, he is mentioning that the thick eyebrows, one would not have to allow water to reach under there, and it would not be essential. If it is thin, however, it would be essential that water reach under the eyebrows wiping the head will not be valid if done over a cloth over the head or over those hairs which when loose flow over the area of one's head now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he speaks about wiping upon the head now sometimes a person may be wearing a topi sometimes or even an amama sometimes imama sometimes a woman she may have on her burqa, etc., parda, whatever have you. It is not permissible to make masa over these things. And consider that masa has been fulfilled. One must get their hands under there, eh? under the burqa, under the parda. And women, women are accustomed to that, alhamdulillah, whereby they will, even if they are probably in a place whereby it is not too appropriate, that they may not want to actually take off the entire burqa, they do it in such a manner whereby they place their hands on their, their burqa and it comes over in such a manner that it is fully covering them. And alhamdulillah, they are skilled with regards to that and they know what to do. Right? But the point being is that we cannot make masa over our turbans, over our topis, over our, over our woman, over her burqa, etc. Now we move on, inshallah, to the, to the commendable acts of wudu or the sunnah acts of wudu. There are, we have now completed the compulsory elements. The compulsory elements without which we will have no wudu. The sunnah acts of wudu, we do them inshallah, it will be more meritorious, it will be more virtuous for our wudu. So 
the first thing that is mentioned here, to intend to perform wudu and recite the name of Allah before starting wudu. Two things are mentioned here that are separate points. One is the intention to perform wudu, and two, the name, reciting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will deal with them separately inshallah. What is intention? Intention is azmul qalb al fi'l. Intention is when we make up our minds that we are going to do something. And what we are speaking about here in wudu, according to the Hanafi scholars, intention is not compulsory in wudu, but intention is sunnah in wudu. It means that if a person were to go in to dive into a pool, a clean pool, or they were to take a bath or and wet all the limbs of wudu, or they were to dive into the ocean and then come out back and now they see that some people are going to perform salah. The question arises, can I go and perform salah? I did not pass wind, I did not break my wudu, I did not do anything that would break wudu. When I come out of, when I came out of the ocean, when I came out of the pool, etc. As long as, the answer is that as long as the person did not invalidate wudu, then they will be able to join the salah. Now the question arises is that the person did not intend to perform wudu. So some people think that they do not have wudu and uh, this is the opinion of Imam Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi. This is the opinion of Imam Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Shafi, he uses the dalil and he uses the analogy of tayammum. When we make tayammum, even agreed upon by the Hanafi jurists, in order for us to have tayammum, we have to have intention. Intention is a must. And there are different reasons that we need to have intention. Generally speaking, it is because when we make tayammum, we, we use dust. Dust is not something that will naturally purify. So therefore, we have to intend. Because if people are roaming about in the dirt, that will not purify them with regards to ritual impurity. And remember, we are speaking about ritual impurity. The purity that is invisible, we cannot see it. So if two people start to ro roll about in the dirt and in the dust, they may even pass their hands all over their face and so on. If they do not intend tayammum, they will not have any tayammum. And they will not be rit become ritually pure. On the contrary, if a person were to dive into the water, all the limbs of wudu would have been touched with water, then they would have obtained wudu. What is the difference? Tayammum, as we have mentioned, the dirt there, it is not a natural purifier. But water, on the other hand, it is a natural purifier. Whether you wanted it or not, it will purify. If a person has some najasat on their body, and let's say, for example, we are holding up a child, and the child urinates upon us, and we are close to the beach. If we want to get rid of that urine, we would go and dive into the water. And it would not cause the water to become impure because that water is more than 10 by 10. That water is large amounts of water. So the understanding that we have is that it will become purified. Why? Water is a purifier by itself. But dirt in itself is not a purifier for ritual impurities. Yes, it does not mean that we cannot use dirt to remove different types of physical najasat. That is under the section of Babel and Jas, the section dealing with impurities, and there are different types of objects that we can use different things to purify it, but that is visible najasat. But with regards to the invisible najasat that we are speaking about, the dirt does not do that except with our intention. As a matter of fact, tayammum also has the meaning of intention. So if a person doesn't want to bathe, what do they do if they want to force, forcefully bathe him? throw water upon him and they will take buckets and start to pour it upon him he will be saying no 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 don't wet me don't wet me but 
No matter how much no he says, the water will come upon his body and it will, to a certain extent, purify him. So this is the point that we are making with regards to intention. Intention, whether we have it or not, our limbs will be purified, water that, is me, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمُ الْمَا And we have sent down upon you water to purify yourselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. So that water has the natural inherent quality of purifying whether we intend or not, as long as it touched the limbs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran, we will have wudu. Imam Shafi says no. Imam Shafi says, you must make intention to have wudu in order for you to dive ten times in the water. You will have no wudu. We say yes. The difference is because water is a natural purifier. Allah has sent that down for purification and it will purify whether we like it or not. So, if a... However, we agree with Imam Shafi that, yes, if we intend, that is a greater reward. Because the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-A'malu bin niyat That actions are by intentions. So therefore, if we intend, we will get the reward of performing ablution, inshallah. So therefore, we intend to perform ablution and we will get the reward. However, having the intention is sunnah. Having the intention is sunnah and it is not for what is... The repercussion, so to say, about that, it means that whether we had intention or not, we would have had wudu. So the person that we started this discussion about, the person who comes out of the water now, he was bathing all the time, he did not urinate, he did not pass when, he did not break his, do anything to invalidate wudu. The question is, can he go and join the salah where the people are performing salah? Yes, he can. Although he was, his intention all the time was just to bathe. His intention all the time was just to swim. But he wet his head, he wet his hand, he wet his face, so he can join the salah. So that is one aspect of this law with regards to intent to perform wudu. The second thing is to recite the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before beginning wudu. لا wudu ali malam yusammi aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no wudu for the one who does not mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says that in order to show us that it will be more virtuous if we recite the name of Allah. It will be more virtuous if we recite the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we begin our wudu. However, if we do not say Bismillah before we do our wudu, does it mean that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, La wudu'a? Liman lam yusami means you absolutely have no wudu? No. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam meant that according to the jurists, it means that if we make wudu and we do not say the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will not have perfect wudu, kamal wudu. We will not have wudu with all its rewards. Just as when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we have mentioned, la salata rijar al masjid illa fil masjid. There is no salah for the person who performed the neighbor of the masjid except in the masjid. It means that full rewards of that individual is in the masjid. However, if they were to perform salah in their homes, la salata does not in that case mean that they would absolutely have no salah. Eh? They will have salah inshallah, but it will be deficient with regards to rewards. So, reciting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something very important. We should recite the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are going to begin to do anything. There's a lot of rewards with regards to that inshallah. But the differentiation with regards to fiqh is that we have to know, do we have to do over an action because I did not have intention? Do I have to redo my wudu because I did not say bismillah? This is the importance of learning the different aspects of the deen and learning the different aspects even to with regards to our wudu so we will know that mashallah you know what i need to buck up myself a little bit inshallah if i say bismillah next time i will get more reward but i'm coming in the masjid i'm coming to perform salah no need to go back out and put, redo the wudu because i did not say bismillah so intention azmul qalb al fa'l to have that intention in the heart now we do not need to say it by the mouth. 
and the movement of the mouth. Oh Allah, I intend to perform wudu. We do not need to. If a person wants to do that, so they can. If a person wants to do that, so they can rectify their intention and you know to remove all the front types of waswasa and so on, and the type of forgetfulness that sometimes come about comes about, then there is no harm in doing so. The person will not intend that that is sunnah, and that is not sunnah. However, if the person wants to help themselves, and sometimes we see many a times whereby people they suffer from the sickness of waswasa, right? Because you know the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us about uh, uh, a jinn that will, uh, uh, it's a devil that will be there when we are making wudu. The name of this jinn is Walahan. The name of this jinn is Walahan. And Walahan means to make a person bewildered. So when a person starts to make wudu, this jinn comes and this devil comes and it starts to what? Do all different types of things and pump different types of things in a person's mind. He cannot remember. Did I wash this hand once? Did I wash it twice? Did I, I am, I am washing my foot, but oh, did you, you didn't make masa on your head. So now it puts the person into different types of waswasa, right? So therefore, there are certain, you know, we just try to be precautious. Do ta'awud and seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these different types of things. It is the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who has taught us about it. But this is why we ensure that we do not waste water and so on when we are making wudu because it will be these types of elements will be there to make us forgetful and also to allow us to waste water etc the second thing or the third thing that we continue with with regards to the commendable acts of wudu is to wash the hands till the wrists in the beginning of the wudu now we mentioned that the entire hand is the entire hand is compulsory but with regards to the masnoon actions, with regards to the sunnah actions, it is sunnah that we begin with the hands. It is sunnah that we begin with the hands. And uh, the hand is something that we have to use to touch the other parts of our bodies. And we have to fetch the water with our hands, depending on the type of vessel that we have in front of us. Right? Mashallah, if we open the taps, and our hands are clean, that, that means that the tap will not get unclean, so everything will be okay there. But what about the situation whereby we have to dip our hand in a bucket or in a barrel to fetch, fetch the, the little mug? Then we have to ensure our hand is clean before we place that in there. Right? And uh, we may have spoken about the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein he mentioned when a person wakes up, then do not, allow, do not let him place that hand in the vessel because he does not know where his hand has spent the night. Right? So now, when the, there may be a possibility of najasat on the hand, so coming back to the point of the hands, we need to ensure that we do not defile or cause any other item or any other object like the cup or the water to become filthy. So we have to wash our hands and when mashallah our hands are clean, we will know that the rest of our wudu will not be contaminated. Alhamdulillah, thumma, alhamdulillah, as we have said, we have a lot of taps, we have water that runs, you know, good, good, good source of water, right? So therefore, mashallah, we do not have to worry about the little amounts of water, but yet still, it does not mean that sometimes we do not have a shortage of water, or the people who live in such a manner, they do not have water, water runs out, and they still have to use buckets. Right? They still have to use buckets. So therefore, the pouring water on the, on the right hand and then the left hand, washing the hands three times, ensuring that water gets between the fingers. Right? Ensuring that water gets between the fingers. We're coming up to that, inshallah. So this, to wash the, the hands up to the beginning, in the beginning of wudu, that is sunnah. Then the cleaning of the teeth with a miswak, a twig, or one's finger, Fingers in the absence of a miswak. This is also sunnah in wudu. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to use the miswak many a times. The miswak is a very good sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah mashami rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentions many, many different rewards and virtues of the miswak. And he says the first of which is that it removes filth. 
and plaque, etc., from the mouth. The least of which, and the best of which is that, mashallah, at the time of death, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that that person will die with shahada on their lips and on their tongues, insha'Allah. So therefore, the use of the miswak is something, it is a very, very great sunnah. A very, very great sunnah. The miswak, it is sunnah that it either comes from the, the, the pilu tree, right? It is generally speaking all these miswaks that we will see selling in the plastics. That is the, the pilu tree. Um, it's like a vine. Then you have the miswak from the olive tree. It is bitter, right? But that is also good and recommended, right? The olive tree, mashallah. And uh, there is even a sunnah method that we, we hold the miswak, right? Whereby the method that is mentioned, we place the three thumbs, the three fingers on top of the miswak, and the little finger underneath, and the thumb on top and we scrub from sideways, sideways. Now, all these things, they have come from the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa with regards to the brushing sideways. And it is directly from the sahabas, they, they mentioned that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he used to brush sideways. And he did not brush, brush up and down except on his tongue. With regards to his tongue, he would brush up and down. So much so, the Sahabas have mentioned that we heard the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam going like, ah, ah, when we scrape our tongue, and we know that, you know, you, sometimes a person feels like they want to vomit, or they feel that, you know, they, they are placed that toothbrush too far. So, or the miswak, you will, you, you, will, you will get that song. This is the song that they, they heard from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the miswak, it is, mashallah, it is a very great sunnah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore, we should try our best to obtain a miswak and we should try our best to use it while we are doing wudu. It is a sunnah. It is a sunnah of wudu. And as a matter of fact, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it multiplies the reward of our, it multiplies the reward of our salah. With regards to miswak, Imam Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi is of the opinion that miswak is a sunnah of salah. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi is of the opinion it is a miswak, it is a sunnah of wudu. It is a sunnah of wudu. This is faqat a technical debate and a te technical argument. All of them agree, mashallah, it is a very, very great sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ikhtilaf actually would show itself when a person has already made wudu, like for example, we made wudu for Asr, and we came to the masjid to perform Maghrib, we already had wudu. So therefore, According to the Hanafis, you will not take out the miswak and, 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 and scrub the teeth again. But according to Imam Shafi, the miswak is a sunnah for the salah, so therefore no problem, you can take it out and do it there. But in reality, that is just an ikhtilaf with regards to what is awla and afdal. If a person wants to do that even according to the Hanafis, then it is also good that a person can do miswak at any time. Any time that is appropriate, that is. In the absence of the miswak, we should use the fingers to scrub the teeth. And Hada uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that the person can use the, the forefinger and the thumb to put in the mouth and rub. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is also mentioned about him that in the absence of the miswak, he used to use his fingers to rub upon the teeth. Nowadays, we have toothbrush. So many people will use the toothbrush. And uh, basically, people would use toothbrush either before meals, after meals, etc. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used the miswak, and Mufti Taqi Usmani rahmatullahi alayhi, he has explained in his dars, with regards to, do we get the same reward for using the toothbrush and using the miswak? He said there are two things. One is the objective of the miswak, that is to remove the plaque, etc. MashaAllah, if a person uses that, they will get the benefit of miswak in that regard, with regards to the toothbrush. We use the toothbrush and we use it with the intention of miswak, eh? in the intention of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, use something else, we will get the reward inshallah for the fulfillment of the re increasing of the salah. But he says with regards to the virtue of the actual miswak, 
of using that, that's a different thing altogether. And if we want to get the actual virtue of the miswak, a like dying with the kalima on our tongues, etc., then we should use that which the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has used, insha'Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But in the absence of the miswak, we use the fingers, right, and rub up on the teeth. To gargle three times. Gargling, as we mentioned, is, the mouth is part of the face, but gargling three times is sunnah. And it is not compulsory to put more water in the mouth while we are making wudu. And it is sunnah to wash three times. To cleanse was one's nostrils thrice with water. To put water into the nose and snuff it out and clean the nostrils. To clean the nostrils. That is also a very important sunnah because as we have mentioned, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that shaitan, he sleeps in the khayshuma. Shaitan, he sleeps in the nose bridge, in the nostrils there. So therefore, when we wake up for fajr salah, inshallah, then we should blow our nostrils properly. Put water in there. Make a good sunnah wudu. Asbighil wudu. Make perfect and complete wudu, inshallah. Right? When we make our wudu, this is the point of us knowing these sunnahs, my dear respected brothers and sisters. When we know the sunnahs, we will do them with that intention and we will ensure that, alhamdulillah, everything is done to a T. So, the, the, the gargling of the mouth three times, three separate waters, one, two, three, and well, spitting now at every separate time, putting water into the nostril with the right hand and cleansing them with the left hand. Then, passing the wet fingers between the fingers and the toes. Passing the wet fingers between the fingers and the toes. And we can put the fingers between our fingers like this. Or if a person wants to pass them on top. Anyway, we do it inshallah to ensure that what? Between the fingers. Right? And we, remember we spoke about khilal. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that we should do khilal of our fingers and our toes. And uh, we mentioned that alhamdulillah if as long as the water reaches in between... It is not far to do so, but if it, is, if it is that our fingers are fat and it is extra fat to such an extent that you actually have to open it in order for water to pass through, then it will be essential for a person to do khilal at that time. So between the fingers and the toes, and how the scholars have mentioned with regards to the toes, that a person will start from the right toe going across to the left toe using the little finger of the left hand, right, to go across. To wash each limb three times, and we have mentioned this, that the sunnah method is that we wash each limb three times, inshallah, that is sunnah. Once is farth, three times is sunnah. To make masa of both ears, to make masa of the both ears, that is also a sunnah. And we will go through the entire sequence, inshallah, of the wudu in a bit. To make masa of the both ends. Then, to maintain the order mentioned in the Holy Quran. That is the face, the hands, the masa of the head and the feet. To follow the entire sequence of, of, of wudu. That is also a sunnah. To follow the entire sequence of wudu. As we have mentioned, we will start with the washing of, 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 the, of the wrists. Right? And then we will go on continuously. And then we will wash the face. And then... The hands and so on. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. The face, the hands, the masa of the head and then the feet. So maintaining that is also sunnah. This is what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. To start with the right limb before the left. Inna Allah yuhibbu tayaman fi kulli shay or fi kulli ashya aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the right. So much so the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even with regards to the combing of our hair and putting on our shoe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the right. So therefore, we should begin with our right to do good things, inshallah, clean things. So we should start by washing the right hand. When we wash our, our, our hands, going up to the elbows, we will wash the right hand first. When we wash our feet, we wash the right feet first. The right foot first, inshallah. So starting with the right before the left. Then making masa over the 
nape. That is the back of the neck. The nape is the back of the neck. Some scholars, some people have mentioned that this is bid'ah. This is not bid'ah, my dear respected brothers and elders. It is mentioned in the traditions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he has made masa on the neep. A masaha ala qafahu. And it is mentioned in traditions. Um, however, we do not make masa upon the hulkum, the throat that is in front. But the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did make masa on the neep. That is passing it on the back of the neck. So these are the sunnah acts of wudu. As I said, we will come up to the entire act of the wudu, inshallah, in a bit. We continue now with unrecommended or the makru acts of wudu. A, to apply water forcefully to the face. To apply water forcefully to the face. When we are making wudu, we should not place water harsh, harshly on our face. Right? But gently, mashallah, the face is something that is muqarram. It is something that is respected from the entire human body. Right? It is something that is very noble. We treat it well, inshallah, and we do not apply water forcefully to our faces when we are making wudu. To speak of worldly affairs while performing wudu, wudu is an act of ibadat. Wudu is an act of ibadat. And mashallah, there are even mustahab du'as that we can say whilst we are making wudu. And we should say these du'as inshallah. Allahumma gfir li dhambi wa wasi' li fi dari wa barik li fi rizqi. This, is, this has been obtained from the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whilst we are making wudu. And uh, sometimes we will read books and uh, we will see that they have different du'as that they mention while a person is making wudu. Mufti Taqi Usmani rahmatullahi alayhi, he comments on this and he says, إِنَّهُ مِنْ دَعْبِ الصَّالِحِينَ Certainly, it is from amongst the habits of the pious people that they will recite different types of ad'iyah whilst they are making wudu. Eh? Something like more or less that when they are washing their faces, they will say, Oh Allah, just as my face is being cooled, do not allow the fire of Jahannam to touch my face. Different types of du'as like this. They are not sunnah. Eh? They are not from the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning that it did not come from the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, Mufti Taqi Usmani rahmatullahi alayhi, he has mentioned that if a person recites them, then they should recite them with the intention that it is something good to say. Not that it is something from the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It will not be considered as a bid'ah and it will be jais. Because there are du'as that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Uh, the, the first du'a that we mentioned, Allahumma gfir li dhambi wa wasi' li fi rizqi wa barik li, wa barik li fi rizqi wa gfir li dhambi. Allahumma gfir li dhambi wa wasi' li fi dari wa barik li fi rizqi. So we can say these dua, duas inshallah while we are making our wudu. But the point that we are mentioning this for that it is better than speaking whilst we are making wudu. Right? It is better than speaking of worldly affairs. Worldly affairs that is. Right? Things like Amr al Ma'roof and Nahiyan and Munkar, turn off the tap, the water is wasting. These types of things. It is not that it is haram that a person cannot speak while they are making wudu. But it is best that a person stay away from speaking about worldly affairs, all these different types of things while they are making wudu, inshallah. To perform wudu with the help of someone without the need to do so. To perform the wudu with the help of someone without the need to do so. Now this refers to, according to some of the scholars, is that we actually, the person's hand is rubbing upon our hand when when whilst we are making wudu not actually the pouring of the water the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam different sahabas used to do khidmat his khidmat they would sleep they would sleep in the same house they would wake up get the water ready for him bring his miswak sahibu siwak hada abdullah ibn masur radiyallahu ta'ala anhu hada abu hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu they used to do khidmat of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they would place his miswak there they would place the water for wudu and also the pouring of the wudu, pouring of the water. So sometimes we would also need a person to hold 
the, the bucket for us or pour water for us. This is not what is being mentioned here. According to the scholars, it means that actually a person's hand rubbing on our hand when we do not need to do so, right? And uh, if there is a need because the person, they cannot reach their feet because they have some injury and somebody needs to wash their feet at that time, then there will be no harm. It will not be makru at that time. There will be no, it, there will be no harm in, in somebody else helping someone in that case because excuse and necessity causes many things to become permissible and it causes the dislike to be removed it causes the dislike to be removed in other kitabs sometimes you will also see that it is mustahab that a person face the direction of the qibla whilst they are making wudu and also to sit on a high place a high and elevated place this sitting on a high and elevated place so that a person would ensure that the water that comes off his limbs will not touch his body as much as possible. Will not touch his body as much as possible. Now, as we have touched on this point, we will mention something, inshallah, with regards to the water that comes off from our limbs. The water that comes off of our limbs whilst we are making wudu is considered to be ma'un musta'mal. Ma'un musta'mal it means used up water. Now, we are not speaking about we are dipping out from a bucket and the bucket that we are dipping out from, that's not what we are speaking about. That is clean water there. What we are talking about, if a person gathers the water that is leaking down from their faces and their hands, then that is called used up water. That water, no one else can use that water to purify themselves. That water is pure, meaning that we can wash clothing with it, it will become pure, inshallah. But, tahirun khayru mutahirin. It is pure and it does not purify. It does not purify, meaning from ritual impurities. Right? So, if you have many people making wudu, and uh, in order that you do not get the place soil, you have a basin under there, and many people are coming to make that wudu, you will get a lot of water under there. Now, even if there is shortage of water, that water will not purify. So therefore, you cannot use that water for wudu. When does that water become? Use that water as soon as it comes off from the limbs. Now, we are just making a lot of kalam and a lot of debates and arguments in a very abbreviated and short form, inshallah, here for the sake of brevity with regards to the class. Right? But the different maslas come about with regards to can we take water from one limb and wet the other limb? Like you are coming into the masjid. You are coming into the masjid and you see that, oops, on my hand here, it looks like there's a place that I missed out. Can I take water from the beard or water from the face and wash it and wet it there and that's okay? No. We cannot take water from a limb that is there that we have already washed and wash another limb nor can we use the water that is falling from our faces when we wash our face and catch it back and touch the touch the hand here why because the water has already been given the hukum of that which is known as ma'un musta'mal used up water and used up water cannot purify what can purify the water in the tap what can purify the water that no one has used to purify themselves as yet? Right? So, I hope that we are not confused, inshallah, but it is just for the sake of understanding. Many people also, they ask that question because it does happen. It does happen. You are running into the masjid. You don't want to miss the first rakat, etc. And then the person, like, he sees something that he has left out. He wants to wet it. Right? He wants to wet it. You have to wet that with fresh water. A water that has not been used for wudu water that has not been used for wudu with regards to the hand that we are making masa that water does not become used up with regards to the hand until the water actually separates from the hand right so when we are making masa sometimes there is um, according to some of the the sahabas they have mentioned that the there are different tarikas of masa as we may have mentioned, right? 
Some of them have mentioned you put the three fingers until half of the nape, sorry, until half of the head, and then we bring that onto the temple and we keep the fingers above. We have mentioned that, inshallah, already. But the thing about it, as we have mentioned before, that does not cause the water or it's not like you cannot touch the sides with the fingers because that has become ma'un musta'mal. No, the, 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 the masa is different. We are making masa with the wetness on the hand. And the wetness on the hand has already transferred onto the head and that's why we are seeing it wet. But the water on the hand that still remains there, that is still wet. So we can use that wet water that is on the hand. Right? We can use, because this is not when we are washing our hand and now the water falls off the, our hand that is ma'un musta'mal. Our hand is already clean and we are using the hand as an instrument to actually pass on our heads. So that's a different thing altogether. But generally speaking, with regards to the other limbs, we cannot take the wetness here because no sooner does it come off the hand, it becomes ma'un musta'mal. It becomes ma'un musta'mal, yes. When it, is, when it is flowing on the hand, when it is flowing on the hand, you pour the water. Let's say sometimes people take the water here and they drop it down. Now that water will start to flow and form veins. So now there's no problem. You can wipe that on the hand. Why? This is not ma'un musta'mal on the hand. When it will become ma'un musta'mal? When it comes down. So what we are saying is, you cannot catch it down here and then bring it back on top here. You can't do that. But on the hand itself, when it leaks down, you just wipe the entire hand and that will be okay, inshallah. Wastage of water, it is also something as we have said, that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even if you are upon the bank of a river, do not waste water. We should be very, very particular about you, the wastage of water. It would be makru, haram, to waste water even while we are making wudu. We continue, inshallah, with times when it may be desirable. Times when it may be desirable to make wudu. And uh, that is like before and after sleeping. Wudu, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to be in a continuous state of purity. Continuous state of purity. And it is something good. It is a very, very good habit that we keep ourselves in a state of purity. Even with regards to the evil jinnat and so on. Inshallah, this can be a means of our protection. That we be in a state of purity. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in one hadith, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made tayammum. Now the sahabas, he went to the washroom. And the sahabas were amazed, O Messenger of Allah, how can he be making tayammum? Because there's water present. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what can give me that confidence that I will live to see the water, I will live to reach that water, right? So the point that we are showing here, my dear respected brothers and elders and sisters, there are different times when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did something, it may not be logical with regards to what we even know about ritual impurity, but there must be some benefit. And this is the point that we are coming at with regards to making wudu. There may be many hidden benefits that we are unaware of to be ritually pure. And we do not even know. Especially those people who deal with jinnats and so on. And those people who are affected by jinnat. And a very, very good advice is that they be in a state of wudu continuously. That is a means of barakah. It is a means of protection, inshallah. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentions that if a person, they are in a state of janaba, they are sta in a state of sexual pollution, they did not take the, the bath, ghusl, so they, whereby they can purify themselves. What they can do if they want to eat or if they want to go to sleep, make wudu inshallah. Logically, it does not remove the ritual impurity even. But the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it, that means it has some benefit. So, the point is that being in our state of wudu all the time is something very good, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So here, before and after sleeping. When we go to sleep, it's a good thing to make wudu. When we wake up, inshallah, there are different ahadith. 
The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that specifically. When you are going to sleep, perform wudu. And then there are different du'as that he has mentioned that we could see. Secondly, to perform wudu for salah when one is already in the state of wudu. We may have wudu that we have performed maghrib salah with. The Isha salah is going to stand. But if we make wudu again, it will be like nur on ala nur. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a person performs wudu, when he already has wudu, he will get 10 rewards inshallah. So it is more virtuous that we make another wudu, wudu ala wudu. Sometimes it is mentioned, and we will see in books of fiqh, that making wudu when a person did not use that wudu is makru. That means, this is not what we just mentioned here, my dear respected brothers and sisters. What it means is that if we make wudu by the wudu kana, and we did not do anything, we did not come into the masjid, we did not perform salah, you know, we did not read Quran, we didn't do anything else, we shouldn't go and make wudu again when we have just made wudu. Because we have already fulfilled our wudu, and wudu is also to fulfill an objective. So we don't just go and make wudu again when we do not have the reason to do so. But if we perform wudu, we perform salah, and alhamdulillah we want to make wudu again, mashallah, to feel refreshed, we are going to perform salah again, then alhamdulillah, nurun ala nur. After giving bath to the dead, after giving bath to the deceased, we are washing the deceased who has died, it is, it is mustahab, and it is desirable that we perform wudu inshallah. Not to the dead, the person who has bathed the given the deceased about it is desirable that such a person make wudu inshallah before taking a compulsory bath before taking a compulsory bath it is sunnah that we make the entire wudu of sal like that of salah before we take a compulsory bath e at the time of anger when a person is angry the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam again Masha'Allah, from the hidden secrets and the mysteries that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has opened for us, he has told us that you know what? When you become angry, say, A'udhu Billahi Mina Shaitan Rajim. If it doesn't cool down, then make wudu. This is behind the statements of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hey, what he has told us to do. When we become angry, make wudu, because certainly it will cool it down. Certainly, it will cool it down when we make our wudu, inshallah. Right? So, at the time of anger, a person is angry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq, inshallah, whereby we can make wudu, it will cool it down, inshallah. Shaitan, is, shaitan and the jinns are from heat. Water cools down that heat. Right? Water cools down that heat. So, at the time of anger. For reading books of hadith and other Islamic books, it's not compulsory to make wudu, but it is something good, mashallah, that we are in the state of wudu to read books of ahadith, ahadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is something that is respectable. For recitation of the Holy Quran from one's memory. For recitation of the Holy Quran from one's memory, we do not need to have wudu. But it is good that we have wudu, inshallah. It is good that we have wudu for recitation of the Holy Quran from our memory. It is not that, again, it is not that it is compulsory, but we can, it is something that is better. Okay, Jazakumullah. Continue next day, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>